folks, uh, Trump just got the worst news ever. And he got it from the most unexpected of places, really from multiple sources. But this one really broke him to his core. Remember that Donald Trump views every judge that he put on the bench as a bribe. That's not necessarily from a legal perspective what's happening, right? I'm not suggesting, although God knows with Trump, but I'm not suggesting that he's literally given sacks of cash to judges. Although, again, I, do, I wouldn't put it past him. But what I am suggesting is he sees every judge that he put into a position from the Supreme Court to the lower courts as a bribe. And today, that bribe just got rejected in pretty shocking fashion. Donald Trump took a massive loss today in Florida. The worst loss he's taken so far, and it comes from his own crony. Hit the like and subscribe button, guys. Again, Trump is trying to delete this video. It might only be up for a couple more hours. God knows. But watch it now and share it far and wide so people know how much of a loss it was for Trump today. The tensions between special counsel Jack Smith and the judge who's puzzling and eyebrow-raising decisions have led to questions about whether she is simply indulging Donald Trump's strategy of delay, delay, and delay again have now turned into a war of words. In a ruling issued this late afternoon, about an hour ago, Judge Aileen Cannon denied Donald Trump's request to dismiss the classified documents case based on the Presidential Records Act defense. In essence, Trump was claiming that he had the right to hold on to national security state secrets because they somehow belonged to him. Today, Judge Cannon rejected that rather ridiculous defense, handing Jack Smith an ostensible win. This could just be round one on these issues. Cannon saying that the criminal charges against Trump, quote, make no reference to the Presidential Records Act, nor do they rely on that statute for purpose of stating an offense. Adding this, quote, accepting the allegations of the superseding indictment is true. The Presidential Records Act does not provide a pretrial basis to dismiss. The judge there leaving the door open to revisiting this issue. And as we've reported on this very broadcast at this very hour yesterday, Kennan had asked both prosecutors and Trump's defense team to address the question of whether those documents could be considered personal in jury instructions, which led to a sharp rebuke from special counsel Jack Smith's team. He called the idea, quote, fundamentally flawed. In her ruling today, Cannon fires back, saying that Smith's demand to settle the issue of whether the documents could be considered personal once and for all is, quote, unprecedented and unjust. It's getting hot in here. That's where we start today with two of our favorite experts and friends. Former lead investigator for the January 6th Select Committee, Tim Hafey, is here. With me at the table, former top official of the Department of Justice and MSNBC legal analyst Andrew Weissman's here. Uh, break this down for me. Well, it may be a bit confusing for people because you might think, oh, well, she ruled for Jack Smith on this motion about the Presidential Records Act. So what's the problem? Jack Smith said, I need a ruling on the Presidential Records Act, that it's not a basis to dismiss the indictment. And she ruled in his favor that it's not. Here's the problem. Until this ruling today, she skipped over making this ruling and said, oh, I just want you to give me jury instructions, which was already very bizarre for a, a trial that has not started and there isn't even a date for it to start. When do you normally give jury instructions? At some point during the trial. <laughs> so, you know, a long time from now. But it was worse than that because she didn't just say, give me your jury instructions as to what you think the law is that I should charge the jury. She said, you only have two choices. You can't, you, I don't want to hear you from anything else. I only want to hear Presidential Record Act Choice 1 and Presidential Record Act Choice 2. In other words, she was all in on the Presidential, Presidential Records Act as a defense here, and she only gave two options to the parties to address. Um, and so Jack Smith, the reason everyone was like, oh, he really took her on, because he's like, you need to give me a ruling, because I don't think the Presidential Record Act applies at all. And the reason you are not ruling is because if you were to rule against us, we get to go to the 11th Circuit. But, but I guess the thing as a non-lawyer is that the Presidential Records Act isn't even applicable in the eyes of Trump's own Attorney General Bill Barr or Trump's own former defense team who says basically legally his goose is cooked. Absolutely. This is this is I can this I can make simple. This is a criminal case. There are criminal statutes that are charged. The Presidential Records Act is a civil statute. It has nothing to do with this so case. So why did the 
judge in a criminal trial have anything to say about it? He, she shouldn't have. And that is why what Jack Smith was saying is, I need you to tell me now, are you going to buy off on Donald Trump's crazy theory involving a civil statute that has nothing to do with this case? And so it's basically within, a talking point for his Fox News interviews. It, it, exactly. And, but it also would be a basis for her to say, I'm dismissing this case on this crazy theory. And, and this is where it is complicated. If she did that um, during the trial and did what's called a Rule 29, she has unfettered, unreviewable discretion to get rid of the case. But can't she still do that? So exactly. So the, the, the part that you read as when going into this, which I think is key, is she said that the Presidential Record Act does not provide a pretrial basis to dismiss. In other words, I'm not going to dismiss now. So what that means is Jack Smith is one pretrial. He, so he's prevailed. But that's pretrial. She's not saying it's not a basis at trial. Um, and that, just to be clear, th it is not a basis pre-trial. <laughs> it's not a basis at trial. It is not a basis after trial. It has nothing to do with this criminal case. So the next question really is, what is Jack Smith going to do? Um, because you really have a judge who was saying something that was completely lawless. She has kept the door open to continuing down this track. And he's got a real concern of once the jury is sworn, will it be too late? So there's, these are the things he can do. Um, he obviously can do nothing. Um, he can try and make a motion to recuse her. Um, she has to respond, and then that can be appealed. He could try and take this record. And Why hadn't he done that already based on the fact that she hadn't ruled on anything yet? So not was ruling. a loud sigh. Yeah, not ruling on things. So to get somebody off of a case, it's a big deal. Like you have to show that the person is really just sort of really in the bag for the, for one side or the other has done things that are improper. So not ruling um, on anything lets so, you aid one side and not the other, but uh, not get recused. Yeah, so she, exactly. So she has been sitting on a variety of things, but to be fair, she has ruled on some things. It's just, you know, it's coming out like an eyedropper. It's, you know, compared to what we're seeing in New York or what we're seeing in Georgia um, or what we saw in the D.C. federal case where you see judges operating you know, in good faith. And you may not like all their decisions, but they're moving the case along as you should. So she is not doing that, but she is making some rulings. So it's not like she's put a complete stop um, to the case in terms of making some rulings. Um, so he could try and recuse her now. He could say this is enough to um, go up to the 11th Circuit now. The other thing that he could do is if she tries to revisit this at trial, there is the ability to go up during a trial. I've done that. Um, it's all of these, by the way, are they're hard. Um, this is just just imagine you don't want the parties on one side or the other to just be, oh, I don't like the judge's rulings. Give me a new judge. Um, you have to have a good record. I do think here there is a good record. One of the things that I just found amazing is obviously, you know, Jack Smith pushed for this, saying you need to make a decision. And within one day, she's making this decision. So he sort of won the, you know, the battle. Um, this this little skirmish, but some of her language is it's hard to not view it as I don't know how to describe it disingenuous. Breaking news now related to former President Donald Trump and his legal issues. A federal judge, Eileen uh, Cannon, will not dismiss charges against the former president in the classified documents case. CNN's Paula Reed joins us now. So Paula, walk us through the the arguments back and forth here. Essentially, the former president has argued that he had the right to take these documents. Now Judge Cannon is saying that that's not enough to dismiss the case. That's exactly right. This is one of Trump's many motions that he has made down in Florida trying to get this case dismissed. But here the judge is rejecting his motion based on the argument that he had the right to take these home under the Presidential Records Act. Now that is a post Watergate law that governs uh, which materials created during an administration belong to a president versus the government itself. Now Trump has suggested that under that law he had every right to take these classified documents. Of course prosecutors have pushed back on that uh, pointing 
pointing out that the Presidential Records Act is not charged here. There's not even an enforcement mechanism. And they also point out the fact that these were classified documents that they allege were strewn about his Mar-a-Lago property. But this issue, Boris, it's caused a lot of tension between the special counsel and the judge because the judge had asked both sides, both defense attorneys and prosecutors, to submit jury instructions related to the Presidential Records Act. And in a filing late Tuesday, the special counsel had issued its strongest rebuke yet of Judge Cannon or handling of this case, saying that there is no basis in fact or law uh, for her to ask for these kinds of jury instructions. And they urged her to reject Trump's effort to even allow the Presidential Records Act into this case. Now, it's interesting in her decision today on the motion to dismiss, she did punch back a little bit at the special counsel, and she insisted that their request that they get a clarity on this issue of jury instructions before the trial starts, because they've said, look, if you're going to put this issue in the trial, if you're going to allow this in, we're probably going to appeal. She said that their demand was, quote, unprecedented and unjust. Look, Boris, this is, this is significant not only because she's rejecting this effort to dismiss the case, but it's notable that she is making a decision because her approach to this case has been unusual. It has come under scrutiny. Uh, an analysis done by our colleagues Tierney Sneed and Hannah Rabinowitz shows that she has over a dozen matters, decisions to still decide outstanding in this case. And of those, eight of them are other motions to dismiss. And the longer it takes her to decide those, the less likely it is that this case will go before November. So what are the odds that we get to trial soon then? Highly unlikely with this backlog. Yeah, it seems highly unlikely, Boris. You know, I was in court uh, about a month ago down there in Florida, and we were hearing arguments from both sides about how far back this case should be pushed. Look, it was penciled in very lightly, uh, penciled in in late May, but that was a placeholder. And she heard arguments from both sides about how far back uh, in the year it could go. Of course, the Trump lawyers uh, don't want it to go before the election, because if Trump is reelected, he would, of course, have his attorney general dismiss Jack Smith and these cases. But the special counsel's office was hoping they could start this this summer. It's been over a month, though, since that hearing, and we still don't have a trial date. So of the more than a dozen decisions that she has still outstanding, the biggest question we're looking at right now is when will she place this case on the calendar? But it seems highly unlikely this case would go before November. An underwriter for his $175 million bond to show that they're financially capable of supporting the president's, former president's bond requirements. A lot to get through. Fortunately, we have former U.S. Attorney Harry Littman with us. Harry, your reaction to Judge Eileen Cannon's ruling in the classified documents case? So my best guess, Boris, is this, is uh, Jack Smith is saying two cheers for Judge Cannon today. On the one hand, she rules, and that's what she wasn't doing, and obviously she took to heart or uh, was was chastened by his very strong filing Monday night that said, Get off the diamond rule already, please. On the other, what she said was very sort of basic. She just said, look, the indictment itself charges uh, the Espionage Act, doesn't mention the Presidential Records Act. The indictment is sufficient to give information. So I'm denying mo Trump's motion to dismiss based on the Presidential Records Act. But she then drops a paragraph that will give a little heartburn uh, that says, of course, I could still at trial uh, change my mind or basically give the jury instructions based on the bogus Presidential Records Act. And so that risk that really prompted uh, Smith to act and do a forceful um, filing is not completely eliminated. But she replied, she issued an order, and she uh, denied Trump's motion.